Hey guys, how's it going? Otaku Mike here, back again with another video for you guys today. If you're new to the channel, you like the content that I create, please consider like, subscribe, and share the video. Last the most important part. Uh, without further ado, let's get into this manga first impressions video. We're looking at Q Hayashira's Die Dark Volume 1. This one's pretty interesting. All right. So, I'm going to try to explain the best way I can about what I just read from this first volume and give you my first impressions on this, because it's a little unconventional, I guess you could say, in the story aspect, maybe? So, to give you a little synopsis, um, we see this dead body floating out in space. We see this um, spaceship pick up said body. Um, these goons find out that um, the body is still alive, technically. And we find out that this is a very famous person. We don't know how he got famous, but he is Senko. And Senko has something very special about him. He has been cursed or blessed whatever you want to say he has been uh given this gift to where if you take his bones you can get one wish um i don't really know what the wish is but you can get a wish and everybody knows this guy and they know what happened to him but we don't know what happened to him but Everybody wants his bones to be rich, be powerful, do something, something to do with his bones. His bones are magical. Why? Who knows exactly? I don't know. So, um, after uh, Seiko is, um, or Senko, I don't remember how exactly how to say his name, uh, gets woken up by his backpack buddy slash skeleton Avakian, who he wears as a backpack, um, who's a pretty cool dude, just gonna say that, um, gets him out of the pickle that he gets himself in. We don't know how he got himself in the pickle. Um, but they end up killing everybody on the station. Um, in a pretty cool manner, they end up, um, he uses this thing, um, uh, what was it called? Like this, like dark power, where he has this cool axe and this cool, like symbiotic, like almost venom-like suit on, to where uh, it protects him. And every time he hits somebody with his axe, he like melts their fucking like skin off, which is fucking cool. That's the best way I can explain it. So without giving too much away about this book, because um, I don't want to give too much away about it. Um, it's just about people trying to get Seiko's bones, and Seiko doesn't want people to have his bones because he wants to live and go on in crazy adventures and stuff like that. And he wants to find out exactly who put this particular curse on Seiko himself and um, maybe kill him. I don't know, kill a person who put the curse on him. Um, this is a really, really interesting way to start a manga. Um, I recommend just going and reading this. I probably did a terrible review on telling you about this book. Um, because it kind of flip-flops here and there between present day and past when Seiko was 11. When he meets one of the coolest characters in the book, um, Death itself. Uh, he kind of becomes friends with Death a little bit. Um, it's pretty funny. Um, so we don't really know what... Seiko is exactly trying to do except we kind of get a hint that he's looking for the person who possibly cursed him um and in a nutshell that's kind of what the book is about so let's talk about the art oh my god the artwork is beautiful look at this artwork right look at all the detail in this artwork i mean it's just oh, beautiful gory horrific oh, just so so cool even the even the color pages color pages you get color pages in this oh it's beautiful i love the way that the mangaka 
just goes to town with this art and just does so much with the detail and the expressions on people's faces and all the little details we get. Like here is a Vakian popping out the axe that uh, Seiko uses. Even when we have Seiko in his uh, little uh, symbiote as dark power seat right there just looks fucking badass i love the world that visually that this manga has created and it's left me with so many questions of what exactly is going to happen because i need to know what's going to happen in this crazy fucked up space world uh where we have uh children who have buckets on their heads who are actually killers Shh, slight spoilers just saying um, but yeah, the artwork is good. Top notch. I have not re checked out the other work that this particular mangaka has written. Um, I think it was, was it Doro, Doro Hidoro? I think it was. But this one is awesome. Uh, the quality is just amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm always surprised when I see uh, somebody step out and just do something crazy and far-fetched and just go and be like very imaginative with their drawings it's almost like if you took um like frank frazetta if you ever seen a frank frazetta picture and then kind of crossed seiko's character design when he's in his human form with uh tin tin from the adventures of tin tin uh that's what i kind of feel like when you, you take this and you just like come on look look at that it looks kind of like tin tin <laughs> but yeah, the, the artwork is amazing. Uh, the quality of this book is actually a little bit better better than most manga out there. It's not too. It's actually a very high quality paper, which is really good, and which honestly it bumps up the price a little bit, which is not too terrible. All right, so as you can tell, I really did enjoy this book. I did feel though that this left me with a lot of questions that were unanswered. Hopefully, I'll get more questions answered as we go on through this series and and you know we get you know, more like a hey tell us what happened you know and why is Seiko out there in the middle of nowhere you know uh floating you know because he's obviously been on prior adventures and we're kind of getting him in the middle section of his adventure what happened in bit behind and you know what's going on throughout the uh, the rest of the story you know which I will be interested to see I did one little caveat. I was slightly confused because it kind of jumped back in time when Seiko was 11. And I was like, okay, what is this referring to? What's going on here? You know, and then it kind of sort of brings it all together a little bit. Like, why is Seiko on this ship that, um, and he's undercover type of situation going by, um, with his undercover name Spaghetti and Meatballs, you know, uh, it's 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 a little odd to say the least, but funny. Um, I liked the comedy in this first volume; like it was funny. Like I legitimately laughed. I normally don't. Sometimes, like comedy when it comes from like manga, will kind of go over my head sometimes because Japanese comedy stylings can be a little different but I found this to be really funny very charming and how they integrated the comedy with some of the violent stuff that happens in this manga which is really funny it's like almost like a dark a dark comedy uh, to say the least um, but this is cool it's cool um, I don't really have too many bad things to say about this. It was enjoyable. Um, it was surprisingly a fast read. Um, I think I'm going to have to go back and reread this after I eventually do get volume two to potentially, uh, there might have been some stuff that I might have missed throughout the first volume that I read. So we'll have to see where it goes from here. But man, this was quite a pleasant surprise. If you're looking for like sci-fi horror 
aspects to a book and you're into sci-fi, some dark comedy, go check this out. It was a lot of fun to read um, and very um, creative, to say the least. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, comment if you're new. Subscribe, comment if you're old, you know. Let me know. You can try this out and pick it up. Um, it was one hell of a read. Uh, I quite enjoyed it, you know. it's It, it blew my expectations away because it did what a manga... Manga normally doesn't do for me. It, it subverted my expectations and um, it surprised me, which it manga, after reading manga for quite some time, um, you know, manga can feel the same sometimes and this felt very much like a breath of fresh air when reading uh, something new, you know, it didn't have a lot of the tropes that I expected it to possibly have. Um, but yeah, it was quite fun, and it definitely, um, might be in the running for, like, book of the year that I've read so far. Um, it was that good. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later.